Now, there's nothing I like better than a bit of genealogy and a family tree. And the Fitzgeralds or the Geraldines are one of the biggest families that Ireland have ever produced and one of the most powerful and famous. This is a family of great heroes and champions who come across and at the point of the sword were able to win a huge patrimony, a huge estate, despite the enmity and opposition of several of the most powerful families in, the, in Ireland and England at the time. The Geraldines are named for a knight from Wales called Gerald of Windsor, but they actually, their shared uh, kinship is to his wife, Nesta, a princess of De Hubarth. And in my books, Swordland and Lord of the Sea Castle, they play a leading role uh, in the first Swordland. Uh, it's Robert Fitzstephen, a knight who has sprung from prison to lead the invasion of 1169. And in my second book, Lord of the Sea Castle, it's Raymond Fitzwilliam de Carew, uh, another son of the family who is in charge of a small, very small army of around 120 men who come across from Wales to force a bridgehead in Leinster and are subsequently attacked by between two and 3,000 Vikings from Waterford. If you'd like to find out more about the my two books, Swordland and Lord of the Sea Castle, please check out the description and there'll be links to purchase or find out a bit more about them in there. Also, uh, anyone living in and around Dublin, I'll be at the Kildare Town Medieval Festival on Sunday, that's August 20th, and hopefully you'll be able to call in and say hello and maybe get a bit of a signed book or just ask a few questions uh, when I'm there. The story of the Geraldines begins in the 1040s when a warrior named Otho, of indeterminate origin but probably Norman, accompanied the Anglo-Saxon King Edward the Confessor back from his exile to take over the throne of England. He was given a series of manors in return for his help in securing the throne for Edward. When William the Conqueror, the Duke of Normandy, invaded and toppled King Harold at the Battle of Hastings in 1066, Otho's son, Walter Fitz Otho, had succeeded to the family estates in England. Nevertheless, he was treated with great esteem by Duke William, who, after taking the throne, named Walter as constable of the newly constructed Windsor Castle in Berkshire, one of his most important royal fortresses. It was from this castle that his sons derived their surname. The eldest, William de Windsor, inherited all his father's estates and his descendants would hold the title of Baron Windsor between 1529 and 1642 when they became extinct in the male line. Walter's youngest son, Gerald de Windsor, inherited little from his father, but his birth to a Norman peer meant that he was made a page and later an esquire in a noble household. It seems that Gerald was placed in the care of one of the most powerful Norman lords of the age, Roger de Montgomery, 1st Earl of Shrewsbury, and a kinsman to William the Conqueror. During the 1080s, Gerald would have risen through the warrior ranks to become a knight and a close conspirator with the Earl's fifth son, Arnulf de Montgomery. In 1093, the death of Rhys ab Tudor, King of de Hobarth, left the whole of southwest Wales open to conquest by the land greedy Normans. Arnulf and his father stormed across Wales from Shrewsbury, devastating a large portion of the Hobarth before building a wooden Motton Bailey castle at Pembroke. Arnulf's friend, the aforementioned Gerald de Windsor, was made constable of Pembroke and, like all his followers, was given lands of his own. In Gerald's case, on the south bank of the River Tiffey, in the barony of Emlyn. The death of King William II of England without children in 1100 led his younger brother, Henry Beauclair, to seize the throne, despite his elder brother, Robert Curthose, still being alive. The Montgomery family, including Arnulf, threw their support behind Robert and made alliances with the Welsh and Irish to help them dispose Henry Beauclair. Arnulf even married the daughter of the King of Munster to solidify this pact. But it did no good, and all the brothers were forced to flee from Britain, their estates being declared forfeit to the crown in 1102. Gerald, as Arnulf de Montgomery's leading supporter, was dismissed from his position as constable of Pembroke by King Henry, and he was replaced by a more trusted knight. However, disturbances, possibly instigated by Gerald, uh, throughout South Wales over the subsequent three years led King Henry to reappoint Gerald as constable of Pembroke in 1105. At the time, King Henry was planning an invasion of Normandy and could not afford to have trouble at home. And in order to make sure Gerald behaved himself, King Henry did something quite odd. He decided to add Gerald to his own family. 
When he had captured Pembroke back in 1102, King Henry had come into possession of one of the prisoners who had been held by Arnulf de Montgomery. Her name was Nest, and she was the daughter of the last king of the Hobarth, who had been killed back in 1093. Nest had grown to become a beautiful woman and soon became King Henry's lover, giving birth to his son, the illegitimate Henry Fitzroy, that same year. And in order to assure Gerald of Windsor's loyalty, uh, King Henry then married Nest to the constable of Pembroke, probably in 1105, and together they would go on to have a number of children. They would come to be known as the Geraldines. Henry Fitzroy grew up to become a large landowner in Wales, with ownership over Naberth Castle near Pembroke, as well as lands north of St David's. In 1157, his nephew, King Henry II, gave him command of an amphibious invasion on Gwynedd, the northernmost Welsh kingdom. But Henry Fitzroy died in battle. His son, Myler Fitzhenry, would play a leading role in the Norman invasion of Ireland, ending his life as a major landowner in County Kerry. A minor character in my book, Swordland, Myler's lands would eventually pass to his cousin, Thomas Fitzmaurice, who became first Baron of Kerry and Lixnaw, and is the paternal ancestor of the current Marquess of Lansdowne. Henry Fitzroy's son-in-law, Walter de Riddlesford, would also play a leading role in the invasion of Ireland and appears in a leading role in Swordland. I should also note that Ness's brother, Gruffith ap Rees, spent most of his life in exile, but eventually returned to Wales and was given back part of his father's kingdom. He would continue to fight for supremacy over the Normans in that part of Wales, and in 1136 won a crushing victory over them at the Battle of Crugmoor in Ceredigion. Four of his sons would follow him as ruler of the Hobarth, but it is the youngest, Rhys ap Gruffith, who is best remembered. He won back much of the lands that had been lost to the invaders. Before we talk about Gerald and Nest's marriage, I think we'll skip ahead uh, to her third marriage, which occurred in around 1120, after Gerald de Windsor's death. She married the most powerful man in the kingdom of Ceredigion, a frontier kingdom in Wales. Uh, his name was Stephen. Not a lot is known about his background, but uh, together they would have one child, at least one child, a boy called Robert Fitzstephen. Robert Fitzstephen's story is, to say the least, incredible. Uh, he began life as a, a high-ranking knight, fighting battles in Wales in high command of armies. Uh, he then became a prisoner of his cousin, uh, the Welsh prince Rhys ap Gruffydd, before being sprung from prison by an exiled Irish king to lead in the Norman invasion of Ireland in 1169. And if you'd like to find out more, I urge you to buy my first book, Sorland, where it's told in full. As we've heard, before she met Stephen, Nest had been the lover of the King of England and then had been married off to one of his most wayward and rebellious knights, Gerald de Windsor, the constable of Pembroke. As a dowry for her marriage to Gerald de Windsor, King Henry gave Ness the castle of Carew, just a few miles north of Pembroke. It was there, it's presumed, that some of her children by Gerald were born following their marriage around 1105. However, four years later, one of the most infamous events in Welsh history occurred. The details are sketchy, but some say that Prince Owain of Powys was at a feast when he heard songs of the beauty of Nest and decided that he had to have her. Racing south into Norman territory, he and a few warriors dug their way under the gates of Gerald's castle, perhaps Kilgaron Castle in Emlyn, and there he abducted Nest and her children. Utterly surprised and with his castle in flames, Gerald the Windsor only survived by escaping down the garderobe. The whole of Wales was appalled by Owain's actions and attacked his territory, forcing him and his father into exile in Ireland. Nest returned to Gerald and together they had more children. But Gerald's revenge could not be sated, not even after Owain returned to Wales with the permission of the king. In 1116, Owain was marching his army to link up with King Henry I, when he was set upon and killed by Gerald, with just a handful of followers. Gerald and Nest had at least two daughters and five sons before his death around 1120. Both his daughters married and had children. Angharad married William de Barry, the Lord of Manaubier a castle just south of Pembroke. Their elder sons, Robert and Philip de Barry, both played leading parts in the invasion of Ireland in 1169. On the death of their uncle, Robert Fitzstephen, without children in 1183, Philip became one of the largest landowners in Ireland, inheriting a huge estate to the east of Cork. 
His descendants would later become Earls of Barrymore. A younger son of Angharad and William de Barry was called Gerald, and he joined the church, but is best remembered as Geraldus Cambrisis, Gerald of Wales, whose works of literature give us one of the best, if not entirely trustworthy, accounts of life in Ireland and Wales in the 12th and 13th centuries. Angharad's sister Gladys married the Lord of Coogan, sometimes named as John, and had at least two sons, Milo and Richard de Coogan. Both would play leading roles in the invasion of Ireland, and Milo appears as a character in my second book, Lord of the Sea Castle. Despite being closely related to the Geraldines and the Barry family, Milo and Richard did not take part in the 1169 invasion, but were captains under Strongbow during his campaign in 1170. Milo and his uncle Robert Fitzstephen invaded the Kingdom of Desmond in 1177, with Milo taking a vast estate to the west of Cork. This was later split between his daughters and brothers. If anything, the descendants of Angharad and Gladys' brothers were even more successful than their sister's sons. The eldest son of Gerald de Windsor and Nest was called William. Those descended from William Fitzgerald, the eldest son of Gerald de Windsor and Nest, took the surname Carew because that castle became their main residence after Gerald's death in 1120. Amazingly, Carew Castle is still owned by the same family, descended from the heir, Odo de Carew, though it is managed by the Pembrokeshire National Park. The Carew family would later hold lands in Devon, and would find prominence under the Tudor dynasty with one George Carew even being made Earl of Totnes. However, his legacy in Ireland is one of cruelty. In the 16th century, he put down the rebellion of his distant kinsmen, the Fitzgerald Earls of Desmond. The captain of a band of warriors, perhaps 120 strong, he crossed to Ireland in uh, the summer of 1170 to set up a bridgehead at uh, Bagambon Point in County Wexford, ahead of the invasion of his master, Strongbow. But to find out more, you're going to have to take a look for Lord of the Sea Castle and see how it all unfolds. Uh, Raymond and Odo's younger brother, Griffin de Carew, also became a, a landowner in Ireland. He uh, was given the barony of Noctofer in modern county uh, Kilkenny, and his descendants continued to hold land there well into the 14th century. Um, I've also read some sources that say that there was a Richard de Carew, an illegitimate son of Raymond, I haven't been able to verify this in any way. He did, some other sources have a brother called Richard de Carew, and it's possible that this Richard, or perhaps the son of this Richard, was the progenitor of the family of Carew who settled in County Cork. In later life, Raymond campaigned heavily in Munster and Cork in particular, and so it's possible that he was able to leave one of his relatives land at Garyville on the border of County Waterford. The Youngest of the three sons of Gerald de Windsor and Princess Nest was David Fitzgerald. He took up a career within the church and quickly rose to the position of Bishop of St David's. This did not stop him having a family and he produced at least one illegitimate son, Miles Fitzbishop, and a number of daughters. Miles fought throughout the invasion of Ireland and was eventually rewarded for his efforts with lands abutting those of Griffin de Carew in modern County Kilkenny. His family seemed to have sold much of their estate to the butlers in the early 14th century. By far the greatest branch of the Geraldine family is that descended from Morris Fitzgerald, the second son of Gerald de Windsor and Princess Nest. Morris followed his father as Constable of Pembroke, and in this guise he fought at the Battle of Krugmore in 1136 against his uncle Griffith ap Rees. He was also Lord of Clonstephen Castle, just south of Carmarthen, but this was lost to his cousin Meredith up Griffith in 1146. This is perhaps indicative of just how under pressure the Norman colony in Pembrokeshire had become during the reign of King Stephen in England. Nevertheless, Morris remained a powerful and well-connected man with a brood of at least six sons, possibly by the daughter of Arnulf de Montgomery, and all of whom who needed land of their own. When the chance came to invade Ireland, 
Morris, then in his mid-60s, was one of the first to volunteer, and he raised an army for his younger half-brother, Robert Fitzstephen, to lead. This campaign was incredibly successful and can be read about in a number of books that I've linked in the description. Morris won great repute and was awarded lands at Nace and Wicklow. Nace passed to his eldest son, William Fitzmorris, and then possibly to a grandson, William Fitzwilliam, while Wicklow was taken by the Crown. Morris's second son, Gerald Fitzmorris, eventually succeeded to Nace and united it with his own estates in Offaly, which he had gained in marriage to the Birmingham family. His great-grandson, John Fitzgerald, would become one of the leading nobles in Ireland and was created Earl of Kildare in 1316. The 8th Earl of Kildare would be called the Uncrowned King of Ireland, such was his power under the Houses of York and Tudor. However, his son and grandson, the 9th and 10th Earls of Kildare, would fall foul of Henry VIII following a badly planned rebellion in 1534. But you can't keep a good family down. And the Fitzgeralds were later restored to their estates and their titles. And the 20th Earl, James Fitzgerald, was created Duke of Leinster in 1766. His descendant, the 9th Duke of Leinster, still holds these honours. Another son of Morris Fitzgerald, Thomas Fitzmorris, inherited the Shannad estate in modern County Limerick through his wife, a daughter of the Justiciar, Jordan de Morisco. Thomas's eldest son, John, would come into possession of Desmond and Disha through marriage to one of the daughters of Thomas Fitzantony, and their descendants would found the line of Earls of Desmond, which only ended with the death of the rebellious 15th Earl in 1583. And by his second wife, John was also ancestor to three hereditary Geraldine Knights, the Black Knight of Glynn, the Green Knight of Kerry, and the White Knight of Mitchelton. Uh, Thomas Fitzmorris, the, the son of Morris Fitzgerald, who had first come to Ireland, also had a second son, Morris Fitzthomas, just to make things complicated. And he built a castle at Mullahiff and became ancestor of the Barons Kerry, who later took the title of Earls of Kerry and later again Marquesses of Lansdowne. The Geraldine family tree is quite extensive and we've really only scratched the surface for those few first generations that came to Ireland. But hopefully you enjoyed that video and the information in it. Uh, if you'd like to learn more, please look in the description and find out more about the Geraldines and my book Swordland and Lord of the Sea Castle. And if you would, please consider subscribing, clicking the little bell, uh, liking and sharing so we get a few more followers on here. I'm Rue Butler. I'll be back next week to talk about a more Irish medieval history. Uh, in the meantime, you can find me on Twitter at Rue Butler. That's R-U-A-D-H-B-U-T-L-E-R or on Facebook um, under Rua Butler Author. Uh, so until next time, cheers.